Now, next I'm going to give some love to Genesis 3 Mail here, but some of you may be wondering, if you're not really familiar with Marvelous Designer to this point, why, by this third tutorial, I haven't shown a single piece of clothing that has any buttons or belts or accessories on it. Well, there's a reason for that, and it's also the reason why I did a tutorial on Virtual World Dynamics, because Virtual World Dynamics can handle buttons and belts, etc., and Marvelous Designer really can't. And I'm going to attempt to demonstrate that here. Um, I've exported Genesis 3 Mail as a OBJ base to use as an avatar in Marvelous Designer. And I'm going to also export the Friar robes. Okay, I've got the startup girl again, so I'm going to say File New, Avatar, Clear All Avatars, and then File, Import OBJ. Here's my G3M base load as avatar and centimeters dash studio. Then I'm going to import add OBJ to garment and the friar robes and centimeters dash studio again. And I'll just wait for that to load. It's a nice layered garment, so it takes a little longer because it's got a lot of polygons. There we go. So now I'm going to hit the sim button and watch what happens. You can see the buckles kind of falling apart there. It's sort of dissolving. And some weird points are forming here on different parts of it. Marvelous Designer doesn't really like coved hems either. And of course the collar is just completely warping into another dimension there. So I'm going to stop this and say file new again, which interestingly enough in Marvelous Designer, when you say file new, that does not remove the avatar. It just removes whatever's on it, which is odd, but it, that's how it works. The good thing about this, the bad thing is that you can't just sim any garment from your Daz Studio library. The good thing is that you can import external objects to sim them if they are one piece or if they have few enough pieces that you can pin them. So I'm going to go import OBJ again and I'm going to try this with an outfit that I bought from Renderosity, a dynamic piece by Shoden. I'm just going to go runtime geometry props and find the OBJ that it came with. So import add OBJ to garment, dark court robe and eight foot poser. There we go. It's not positioned correctly, but at least it's the right size. It has lots of lovely folds there. It's a bit big for Genesis 3 male, but that is okay. I'm just going to scoot that around a little bit to the best fit we can get with the current setup. Then I'm going to start pinning parts of it to the avatar. So I'm going to pin this corner right here. I'm going to pin these little points in the shoulder area. I'm going to pin this shoulder section as well. And it looks like this is meant to be in the waist area, so I'm going to go ahead and pin that to his waist. And I will pin this to his hip. Let's see if there's anything else here that egregiously needs pinning. This needs pinning to the thigh area. Let's try that. Okay. So now I've done that, and I'm going to hit the sim button and just see what happens here. Okay, I ended up needing to add more pins than I originally thought to prevent nudity in the hip and bum area especially. But I've got something here that has been simmed, is draped, and isn't falling off the character, so at least that's somewhat functional. It's going to sim somewhat slowly because of its high poly count, but it is a pretty nice looking object. So at least there's a possibility you can use your poser dynamics with Marvelous Designer. Let's try it with a pose for Genesis 3 Mail and see how it does. In case anyone has forgotten, up at the top of the screen there are these three buttons with little purple pins on them. The left one allows you to edit the pins. Everything turns ghostly and you can see where all the pins are there when I do that. The second one allows you to pin the garment to itself. And the third one, which has a little picture of a silhouette of a man there, or a gingerbread person, allows you to pin the garment to the character. So I'm going to turn off this sim. I'm going to go back to the select move tool or hit Q. 
and I'm going to select Genesis 3 male. Then I'm going to go back to Daz Studio and I'm going to pose Genesis 3 male and export that for use as a morph target. So let's do something a little bit more difficult than the kind of poses you would usually use. Let's try um, Genesis 3 male lying on his side. I honestly don't know if it'll even be able to handle a pose that extreme, but let's try it. If anything can, Marvelous Designer can. So I'm exporting that to OBJ, and then I'm going to select it in Marvelous Designer, and File, Import, OBJ, and back to the place that I exported that. Okay, and I'm going to import that and choose Load as Morph Target and Daz Studio, because even if the robe came in at poser scale, Genesis 3 Mail came in at Daz Studio scale, so I need to make sure I have the right preset chosen there. Then I'm going to hit OK and let it run. And because it's using a morph target and not a Kalata animation, it's going to sort of morph and warp his shape into the new shape. Instead of fully animating him, you can see his right arm getting really short there. And that decreases the probability of this working when it's a more significant change from pose to pose, but Let's wait and see. Maybe it'll work. Okay, that looks a bit awkward. You can see that he went through some Lovecraftian contortions to get to this shape. But at least it didn't crash, and we now have a simmed OBJ we can export to Daz Studio. So let's see how that does. Export to OBJ, and I'll use my same drape name again. And I'll uncheck G3M base so it doesn't export him. Leave it at single object, weld, and thin there. And... Tell it OK. I'm frankly curious what it's actually going to do to the UV with that, so let's check that as well. And there it is, imported into Studio. I will need to set the surfaces to the IRA Uber base again. I have a script preset here because I set it as a custom action. And I'm going to look at the UV view, which is up here in your camera drop-down. It's currently the default camera, so I'll click on the drop-down and then choose UV view. And I will say view by node. And it looks like there's no UV at all. So I think that if there was a UV to begin with, it has been probably hashed by this process. So I'm actually going to go back to the camera view and see if there originally was a UV for the product that I purchased. Let's go back. If it was intended purely for shader use, there may have never actually been one. Okay, runtime geometries props. Let's see what that looks like in the UV view. View by node. Okay, it had a UV at one point. It's a bit overlapping there, but that originally was not a problem because originally it had all of these materials that Marvelous Designer has annihilated. So I think what I might do, I'll go to the default camera, and I will re-import the original poser item. I will need to import it at the poser scale, of course. And then I'm going to see if it will let me import my exported OBJ as a morph target. Let's see what it says. Oh, it says that it worked. Let's look. Sure enough. So I can actually delete that and use the original OBJ, and that way I retain my nice materials and all my nice different zones. And then you can texture that with Parrot Dolphins shaders or a very nice set by Destiny's Garden. Actually, more than one very nice clothing or cloth set by Destiny's Garden. And you can then use these lovely Shodan products on your Genesis 3 male. Or indeed, probably on Genesis 3 female, although I suspect that's going to take more pinning. In case anyone forgot, you actually load a morph target there by selecting the OBJ of the poser product I just used, and click on this little icon that looks like a bicep with the letter P to open Morph Loader Pro. Then click on Choose Morph Files, and choose that OBJ from Marvelous Designer, and Deltas only. For this purpose, I'm just going to leave it in the Morphs Morph Loader group. You'd never want to do that for a product. You need to give it a new name, in which case you would right-click and choose Create. 
and say actor movement or something and click accept and then your morph is in a nice group but in the meantime I've got this morph under drape for my pose for Marvelous Designer and you can use any exported Marvelous Designer sim as a morph target in Daz Studio. It's a very robust, very powerful use that means that you can actually use these old Generation 4 dynamics on your Genesis 3 figures, or indeed on any figure. If you're using Genesis 2, you can use it on Genesis 2. It's very, very useful. And that's one more reason why a non-PA might have a use for Marvelous Designer. All right, next I'm going to actually simulate an Optitex dynamic item, their toga. Looks like that. And I'm going to export that to OBJ to use as a morph base. So export that and call it toga base here. And I'm going to also export Genesis 3 male in a morphed and posed form. I've already, since I've already got a base for him, I'm gonna use Raw's massive and a walk pose. I don't want to get the legs super far apart for this one. Okay, let's try this one from, I think, I think it's from Heartthrob, it's certainly from an Iron Man 13 product. There we go. And I'm gonna export that to OBJ as well. And I'm going to do that to Daz Studio scale, not poser scale. The mistake I made on the first take of this Daz Studio, yep. So I've got my blank file in Marvelous Designer here. I'm importing that OBJ. So G3M base, load as avatar, Daz centimeters preset. And then always remember to load the garment you're simulating before you load the morph target. So the next thing I do is import add OBJ to garment and import that toga base I exported. Same scale preset, Daz Studio and centimeters. And of course it looks very small because he's going to be quite large when we get done. So now I'm going to click on him and say file, import OBJ and choose my item and click on load as morph target and Daz Studio scale again. And then I'll click okay. And now I'll just wait for that to simulate. And you can see that it's falling off of him because I didn't pin it. So I'm actually going to have to click the pin to avatar option here, drag this back up to his shoulder. And it's going to freak out a little bit as it does that, but I'm also gonna pin it back up here on his hip on each side. Since it's sort of falling apart there. There are different fabric presets that you can use in Marvelous Designer to make things stiffer or less heavy. Really, I should have pinned this before I started the sim. That's that's my mistake. But meantime, you can see that it's caught his fingers in a couple of places. But that doesn't interfere with our workflow at least. So I'm going to click on that and file, export OBJ, and Give that a name. Togamorph. Make sure that I have unchecked the Genesis 3 mail base on the export dialog. And make sure I have checked the Daz Studio centimeters option. And then I can go back to Daz Studio, make Toga large visible again by clicking on this eye icon in the scene tab. And I will go to Morph Loader Pro, the icon that looks like a bicep with the letter P on it. Click choose morph files. And I will find that togamorph and put it under actor movement again. You can change the property group name by right clicking on the words property group and choosing create. Now I click accept. And now I have this morph that sort of matches the character's walk. I think that he must have scaling on that did not export. There we go. It was actually the translation of the toga that was causing problems. So that's a bit of a silly looking morph because I didn't pin it first. 
But you can see that that worked, and now I've got a morph target that's simmed in Marvelous Designer on this Optitex Dynamic object. And you can do that with any of the Optitex Dynamics, and some of them have really nice textures, so it's definitely worth giving it a shot for your scene, because if you already own Marvelous Designer, it sims faster and with better folds and wrinkles than Daz Studio's native dynamics do. All right, that's it for part three of our Marvelous Designer tutorial series. Thank you for joining me, and happy rendering!